All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be able to welcome back Dr. Justin James Kennedy, who is in uh, Germany at the moment. How are you doing? Locked down with lots of beers that you can't drink. Ah, yes, indeed. Indeed. Yes. Well, um, at least Germany are still in the Euros, so that's exactly. that's a good thing. That's a nice distraction exactly. for you. Exactly. And uh, and obviously, uh, you know, Justin is a TEDx speaker, author, neuroscience executive coach. And what we're going to talk about today is something to do with neuroscience, and that is uh, how can you win over new online clients by uh, applying neuroscience? And this is a fascinating one, Justin, because let's face it, people... Uh, you know, people struggle online when they're when they're really comfortable doing things in person and all of that. But suddenly, online seems to have, even though people it's been forced on people for a year and a half, it still seems to throw people a little bit, and they don't understand how to use the medium correctly. Right, right. The the, the online space has become um, the new norm. So even when we are allowed um, permanently back in the office. Um, the online space will continue to be um, um, home for a lot of people's business, um, which is a good and a bad thing, mainly a good thing. I've been working online um, in my coaching practice for many years, and even as a professor, I've been working remotely. So this has its good and the bad sides, but mainly in the good. And a friend of mine said, you know, can you show me how you've applied your academic research in neuroscience into your sales process and how do you win over new clients online i said you've been doing for so many years what do you do what what can i do so out, out of that conversation john um was born a pilot study with um, a bunch of coaches from marshall goldsmith uh oh. community mm -hmm. marshall who and lives uh, over the just over the hills from me here over the hill i hope he has you for tea later he's a very good chat <laughs> And anyway, and, uh, and out of that, we, we did a study with the stakeholder centered Marshall Goldsmith coaches. They loved it. And out of that was born the Brain Hack Project, which shows coaches and consultants how to win over new clients through the lens of applied neuroscience. So what then happens is there's a couple of modules that we put together to take people through that process. Um, so that is what the Brain Hack Project is, helps you hack the client's brain so that you know what they need, you know what they want, and you get to do it in the way that you would normally on, on a normal conversation, but using the, the online platform to get the same rapport and the same buy-in to your, to your work. So that is, that is the overview, John. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. So how do you go back? So if you're, if you're going to start a, a, or if, if you're going to make a change for how you interact with people online, uh, what are some of the places to start? Okay, so the first plot part is to start with the unconscious awareness of the client. Mm -hmm. So the, the first thing to do is to make sure that you are attractive to the client not that you need to be physically attractive mm -hmm. but in the way that is attractive by smiling um, by using your hands by nodding as you're doing so elegantly and, <laughs> and, 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 and laughing at all my bad jokes you know yes. that's that's the, that's what you want to do you want to get that rapport going and um, by understanding the application of neuroscience you help influence the decision making because people feel that rapport so on the platform that people go through um, we show the latest research from neuroscience and show the practical tools that enhance the learning and also the motivation to learn. Um, so <clears throat> that is the kind of the, the sales pitch of the course, but it really shows you how to understand the physiology mm -hmm. of the brain and how that influences choice. Um, and there's, there's three people in the process, if you want me to describe them. There's yeah, three please do. In the brain. Okay, so what I call it in the process, I call it Amy, Charlie, and Peter, which <laughs> presents three three parts of the brain. So Amy represents the amygdala, which some and most people know it's associated with um, emotional response, uh, usually unconscious reflex 
emotional reflex, which happens to everybody when you mm -hmm. see a yep. baby um, or when you see a toddler um, cycling in the road and you have to slam my brakes. Everybody has this, this emotional reflex. And when you notice that reflex, you become consciously aware. But before you become consciously aware, this unconscious emotion pops. And what the brain, the aiminess in you, mm -hmm. translates that message over to Charlie, which is the cerebellum. And Charlie looks at this informational data and says, how is this familiar to habits or patterns that I've seen in the past? Where do I put this in the jumble sale of my brain? Mm -hmm. And what happens after uh, Charlie has said, okay, this is where the Lego goes, only then does uh, prefrontal Peter jump into the mix. Okay, I now get it. I'm now conscious. I now understand the emotion and I see where to put this in the picture. So Peter is always the last at the party. Consciousness is always an afterthought. And in that process, John, it's about helping people be influenced by what they want versus what they need. Mm -hmm. If that's if that is a good understanding, if that's a good yeah. way of describing it, I don't know if that helps. Absolutely, no, it hel it helps a lot. Uh, so there, so I mean, part of it obviously you have to prepare your mindset before you go online. Yeah, 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 sure. You 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 got to show up. Um, you can't just wander out the shower. You know, you, you got to you got to go to a meeting, um, and then arriving at the meeting, you need to have become familiar with what the person is about and you know, look at their look at their profile look at their their work look at their you know look at their linkedin mm -hmm. so what is uh, uh so when you when, when you're in you know you've got these three parts working and all that i mean how how do you actually like focus so you 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 use your brain in the correct way if you like mm -hmm. So the, the neuro-linguistics, not the NLP, which many people mm -hmm. would refer to it, it's a, the, the neuroscience of language, shows that there's three things you, you need to do linguistically to appear attractive to the audio sense. And mm -hmm. that is by preparing, presenting, and persuading the influence in line with the needs versus the wants. So it gets a little bit technical and we'll get yeah. through it in the course a bit more. But in, in the first part, you need to prepare. You need to show up in a way that is showing the person that you're interested. So mm -hmm. you can never yeah, underestimate it, that. Well, I think because, all, because there's often the temptation. I mean, if you were going to physically meet somebody, you know, you're mm. prepared, you're there on time, you're all of that stuff and blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, but when it comes to online, people are like, oh, last second, oh, yeah, I got, oh, got a meeting with such and such. And then you're, so, you're scrambling and it's mm. not the same mental preparation. It, it is easy not to prepare when, you know, you've got kids screaming in the other room or when you're um, meeting online. It's easy not to prepare. I was on a on a on a radio blog um, before before this call and I said to them I need to um, end um, at quarter two because I need some time to get ready for my next meeting and they said you know where are you going I said well I'm I'm going to a, a new zoom room and they said oh okay well I don't know what it can take you 15 minutes to get there I said to them, I need to get in the zone. I need to yeah. get ready. I think you're ready for John. And I don't know if I can uh, can do it right if I've got enough time to uh, prepare myself. Yeah, but it's a great point, though, isn't it? Like, uh, you know, the people are thinking, oh, well, yeah, you know, it's no problem. You mm. just, you know, just hop on the other room. You don't have to, mm. like, prepare anything like that. But it's not... Mm. But it's not the case. And I think people have fallen into into that trap. So if you if you turn up properly, you show up properly, you do your preparation, you get into the call. What is, what's the next step in really in really engaging with the other person? The, the next part is asking intelligent and relevant questions so that you can filter out their wants and their needs. Mm -hmm. So people want one thing, but they need another. People uh, want to have ice cream, but they need to stop being hungry. So mm. um, maybe ice cream is not a good example, but you know, you you get you get the metaphor. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, because so, ice cream for ice cream is a good meal at the end of the day. Yeah, you don't, you don't even need that. to be hungry for ice cream. You can, just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you can have ice cream whenever, 
Um, so, so in saying that, you need to spend the time listening to the person so that you can clean up the distinction. And by doing that, people buy into what you are saying because it really shows up that you're listening. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result, it makes the engaging on what you have to sell and what you want them to buy attractive because you're not selling, you're just meeting their needs. Yeah, and, and I think it's one of the things that people often, you know, make a mistake is because, I mean, especially if you're anxious and you're maybe you're, you're mm. you, you want to get a sale really quickly, that the minute you hear something, you go, oh, that's that's something I can I can help you with. But as you said, maybe it's just a want, maybe it's not a need, maybe there isn't enough urgency behind mm. it, maybe you could go down this rabbit hole and spend a lot of time talking about it, it turns out at the end of the day, they're willing to live with it. Exactly. If if you speak about my wants, I will either get the feeling that you're trying to sell me for something, mm -hmm. or I'll get irritated. If you if you speak to my needs and you show that you're interested, your persuasion process becomes very elegant. So I always say to people, it's the three P's of selling and winning over new clients: prepare, present, persuade. Mm -hmm. And prepare, well, we've discussed that enough. We can go into more details, which we cover in the course, on what psychological and you know, diligent preparation is required. Yeah. In the presentation requires a whole different set, which we can speak about as well, if you like, yeah. John. Yeah, let's talk about, okay, so you've got over the first part. Let's talk about the, you prepared well, so the presenting. So when you present your idea, you need to not present your idea. You need to make sure that your presentation of your product or service is based on the unique, the bespoke requirements. So if you're selling a coaching process for sleep or uh, insomnia, you, you, you don't start by saying, you know, here's a new gadget or I can help you with your sleep. No, you spend time understanding the subtleties around that person's needs. And when you present, you really present evidence of understanding. Mm. And, you, and you then got opportunity. You can say, I understand your need. And this is an opportunity to give you the tools to apply the benefits. And then the persuasion is less clunky. It, yeah. it, it, is, it is very elegant. And I like you, what you, you said there, though. I like what you said there about the evidence of understanding, because I think that's another part where I mean, not just in in business, but I just think life in general, people right, would right. be better would be better off if they uh, if they clarified and validated and uh, and demonstrated mm. that they mm. heard what the other person was saying. And I think that's so mm. key because that's such a level of respect like if i if i'm telling you all of this stuff and then you come back to me and say okay john just based on what you're saying here's uh, just i just want to clarify and make sure mm. i'm understanding and then mm. you repeat back to me and you validate and clarify for me that's a that's showing the utmost level of respect um, and there's, there's a great conversation behind that respect because neurologically john it takes a lot more energy to listen than it does to speak because speaking, you can just ramble up, blah, blah, blah. You're just, you're living in your own mind. But listening intelligently and attentively, you really have to turn off your opinion and you have to really absorb the content. You know, that's process power. That mm -hmm. is energy. And uh, my wife got off a two-hour call with a, a client recently and she said, I need to... I need to just go go for a walk and just relax. I said, what happened? I've been on a call for two hours. And she said, I'm exhausted by listening. And I said, good, that shows evidence that you were doing your job. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think that is... Uh... And, and to be honest, listening is a skill that I think a lot of people have lost. And we, right, we live in, right. and as, as we discussed before, we live in this reactive culture where exactly. it's more about reacting quickly than it is about thinking or listening. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think this is a really, really imp important piece because I do think it'll make you stand out if you invest the time in listening and then you validate mm -hmm. because that's the other thing, because especially in an online scenario, right? 
that other person is telling you about everything, but they don't know what you're doing. You could be watching you, the Euros on your phone or something at the same exactly, time, or you could exactly. be, you know, texting. So the uh, fact that at the end goal, that you come, sorry, I'm yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so at the end, you know, at, at a point if you come back and you say, okay, I just want to validate and go through, make sure I'm, I'm understanding properly. You know, then they've gone, okay, this person actually is, it did invest their time mm. and energy with me here. Mm. And it feels good when people have paid attention. You know, it feels nice. It feels mm. that you are getting some dosing of reward. And I speak about that in the course, which is the dose model, showing how the brain responds when you're winning over new clients. And the D is for dopamine. The O for oxytocin, S for serotonin, and E for epinephrine to have that red bull to take action. So we don't have to go through that now, but we can if you like, John. But it's just a simple model to follow the neurology during winning over new clients. Yeah, I mean, let's if we have time. Let's quickly dive into that because that, that's, okay. uh, that's fascinating as well. Okay, well, the, the dose model shows you the neurological journey that works to get a person to take action. So how you can influence their neurology and you can motivate them to make a decision. So the first part of the dose model is the D and dopamine is the neurotransmitter of reward or benefit or seeing opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if you see a hundred dollar note lying on the pavement, you think, oh, okay, I'll pick this yeah. up. This is, you know, this is an opportunity. You know, there's yeah. going to be a reward by bending over. So <clears throat> if you build that into the initial part of the conversation, you then get people interested. You then give the perception of something that they're going to get benefit out of this time. And mm -hmm. if you load that with oxytocin, which is the uh, hormone of connection and rapport, you then get a person to kind of feel you're on their side. They kind of feel mm -hmm. that you are here with them. You're not here to make them buy something or make them listen to your jibber jabber, but you're on the same side. You're not trying to beat them mm -hmm. or convince them. And, and when the, the dopamine and the oxytocin are felt in the client when you're winning them over, you then get a flood of serotonin. And the serotonin shows the brain that this is a safe space. Mm. This place is going to offer me benefit and reward. This has generated enough rapport to make me feel that this guy is a good guy or girl or whatever. And when that happens, you then get an epinephrine flood. You get what I call the Red Bull effect. And the person says, okay, let's take action. Let's do this together. Let's, I don't know, whatever the opportunity might present. So when you have built those three, they then feel listened to, they feel understood, and they feel motivated to proceed. Excellent. I mean, it's, such, it's, so, it's so fascinating because, I mean, people, you know, I think people often approach these things at a very superficial or, or you right. know, level and just thinking, okay, if I say the right thing and it you, resonates with you, then we can move on. But as you pointed out here, there are neurological steps that the person is mm -hmm. going through. So being aware of those is obviously going to put you in a stronger position. Mm. And then there's a whole bunch of tools we can speak through. And maybe, maybe that's for another time, but the, mm -hmm. there's a whole battery of tools that take you step by step with some flexibility because nothing is as rigid um, as a digital sure. uh, process. But so that gives you the process to follow um, so that you feel elegant in the process. Yeah, and I think that's the key word there, uh, Justin, is the elegance because um, there are so many inelegant, I think to put it politely, approaches. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and I think, you know, uh, the more you can connect in an elegant fashion, the more right. you can, you know, I mean, that's what that's what that's what's attractive to the other person, right? right? If you call me up and we're on a sales call or whatever, I want you to be an expert, I want you to be sophisticated, I want you to right, be elegant, right. I want you to be all these things, I don't want you to be that person I'm trying to avoid. 
exactly you you want you want to feel that connection you want to feel motivated to do something you're wasting your time unless there's some benefit and um that's the opportunity to show elegance and how you can win them over by not trying to win them over but helping to meet their needs yeah and as we said i mean all of this if you when you're doing this online it just requires that you give it the same amount of 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 focus and attention as you would if you were doing it in person um you need to do a bit more actually more yeah um, because you're only seeing a person um from the the chest up luckily mostly i'd say so i mean especially if you're wearing your your football yeah. shorts yeah. and ready for the game later but there is a lot to be said about what you need to do so the first thing is you need to sit up with your head close to the top so the person can see you the second is to use mm -hmm. your hands so that they feel that you are engaging with them mm -hmm. and the, the the third thing which is probably the most important is to look at the camera yeah, yeah. people end up looking all over the place and you know it's easy to spot someone who is not looking at you yeah um, absolutely so and i think uh, the other part too is if you're like this if you want to take some notes just it's always mm, good to say so i'm just making a note of that mm, very good so that the person realizes that you're writing it down and you're not like you know yeah. playing x's and o's on your piece of paper <laughs> yeah so it's good it's good to keep them um in mind of what you're doing so that they feel that it's it's something that's going to help them down the road with you taking notes clearly that is so, yeah absolutely uh, so the, the way of um, winning over new clients with the brain in mind is pretty straightforward like everything once you know how it works but from the outside looking in everything looks complicated so the, the course has really made it simple and simplicity doesn't mean it isn't difficult sure and difficulty doesn't mean it's complex so um the the, the process is enjoyable the pro the program is self-study so you can do it as well there's lots of video interaction i did i don't know maybe like two dozen videos for this thing so you can skip through the reading and watch me if you like and also <laughs> it comes with um conversations as well through the learning process so people can engage with me and discuss um, areas of concern or insights or new clients they have um, found through the process john yeah listen this is fantastic so i would encourage everybody to check it out all of uh, dr justin's uh information will be below this video so i encourage you to go check it out go check out this course i think you know it's it's a fascinating subject and i think anything mm. that can give you an edge is worth an investment of your time and this clearly goes obviously a lot deeper than we discussed today but i would really encourage people to check it out oh thanks john that's very kind of you it's really yeah. nice seeing you again yeah you too uh, and i'll see all of you again for another interview really soon thanks justin okay thanks john